Hi, I'm Angus King, and we're delighted you're going to join us today to talk about digital education. And what we want to talk about is the most powerful instrument ever invented for education, the teacher. Not the computer, not the blackboard, not the book, but the teacher. And after six years, almost seven or eight years now, of experience with the MLTI program in Maine, the big learning that we have is it is all about the educators. It's all about their use of the technology as a teaching and learning tool and not about the technology itself. Computers, laptops, one-to-one -one is an enormously powerful educational tool, but it only works, as I said, in the hands of a skilled educator who knows how to use it. And of course, this year marks an enormous turning point for Maine, going from seventh and eighth grade one-to-one -one program into some 60 or 70 high schools. And we expect the rest of the high schools will uh, jump on this project over the next couple of years. So what we're gonna be talking about today with some educators is how to do it, what to do. The basic question is uh, 10 things I wish somebody had told me when a couple of thousand laptops arrived in my district. And that's what we're gonna be talking about with Lisa Hogan who is the tech integrator at SAD 75, but also a classroom teacher for, for many years, not in the Grosstown School in Brunswick, maybe, but, <laughs> but uh, for a while. And Sarah Sutter, who is currently a classroom teacher, also a tech integrator, also a virtual educator. So we got all kinds of pieces. Lisa, put your mind back uh, six, seven years. What's the thing that you wish somebody had told you before all the laptops arrived in your classroom? Well, I guess I think someone had, if someone had said to me, take a deep breath, this is all going to work out, take it one day at a time, try one thing, think about how it worked, talk to the kids about how it went, and try, then try another thing, I think it would have been really helpful to relax me and make me understand I didn't have to know it all, all at the same time, that I had time to learn and grow as a teacher with this tool. Now, I also want you to look back the, to that time. Can you imagine now going back to teaching without these tools? No, <laughs> I can't even think about going back to a classroom without having devices for students to use at their finger mid, fingertips at the moment of learning, at the time they actually need to find information, at the time they need a simulation to see those hard to see concepts. I can't imagine not having that available anymore. Okay, we're gonna be talking about all, all techniques and classroom techniques and all those, but let's back up a step. Why do this? Why are we disrupting all these educators' lives and spending all this money? What's, what's the point? I think disrupting is, is a really good term. Um, the concept of disruptive technologies and disrupting education and taking it forward into the 21st century, which we're already almost a decade into, um, we need to be using the tools of today's culture. And the laptops are the tools for that. And education needs to keep pace with that. And this is one way we can do it. I think one of the things we're talking about here is access to information. Throughout history, education has been about conveying content. And right now, the content is exploding so fast we have to convey the ability to use the content and access it. That's what the laptops are all about. Oh, absolutely. Um, the information and the amount of information that's available now um, and the rate at which it changes is enormous. And uh, having that available to kids and teaching them how to cope with the overload of information is equally as important as teaching them where to find the information, how to find the information, how to evaluate the information. So yes, I think it's it's exceptionally important for kids to be able to have that information now, available. Your first piece of advice was take a deep breath, relax, and, and, and work into it. Expand on that a bit. Again, we're talking to educators, who some of whom have some experience with this, some of whom don't. What else do they need to know? I think they need to learn that they don't need to know all about how all of the tools function before they can actually let the students use them in class. Um, they can draw on the expertise of the students. Some of the students will have learned some of the tools at home. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Learning, learning from, from students? students. <laughs> You're allowed, that's allowed. It is allowed and certainly encouraged. Um, that dialogue with the students and allowing the students to take a role as a leader in the class to not only help the teacher learn how to do something, but to teach their peers. Uh, if they have a level of expertise, you should be drawing on that. And the, the students can actually do some of the tech work in the classroom. Absolutely. And in fact, I've seen in schools where students who really weren't doing that well, weren't engaged, uh, 
disciplinary problems, suddenly became the class tech officer, and it gave them a, an important bit of responsibility. It did. It gives them a reason to engage with the class, engage with their peers, and engage with the teacher with uh, a new level of respect on both sides. I think it's very important. These educators all have laptops themselves. How about the role of play with it at home? Learn to Learn to use it. It's, it's okay. A lot of people, you, you, it's very hard to break a computer other than dropping it out of the window. With a keyboard, you can't break it. Exactly. And um, the more that they play, 10 minutes a night, 20 minutes a night, um, the more they're going to learn and develop some self-confidence in using the device. And I think learning together as teachers is a great thing for, for teachers to be thinking about. For example, if I'm not quite sure how something might or might not work, I might go to Sarah and say, can you explain this to me? And vice versa, she may come back to me next week because we can't know it all. But we together we know a whole lot more than if we just try and learn it all well, ourselves. Well, part of what we're going to try to produce here for this video and, and related materials is a, is a list of resources, places you can go, websites and those kind of things. But maybe the best resource is other teachers. Oh, absolutely. I think so. And I think watching and listening to what your colleagues are doing with students and how they're utilizing kids and the programs and applications and the way they're using them, all of that, that collaborative piece is hugely important. Well, of course, the, the high school teachers in Maine have a huge resource ready-made in middle school teachers who've been doing this for five or six years. Do high school teachers talk to middle school teachers? I mean, is that allowed? <laughs> it's allowed, but it doesn't happen as often as you think. With the schedules and the different buildings, uh, sometimes it's difficult to have a, a multi-grade uh, level discussion. But certainly, I think one of the greatest resources uh, is going to be perhaps a person in your discipline that's been working in the middle school level, and you can see what they've been doing, and then you'll know a little bit more about what the skills in the content area might be that the students are bringing to your classroom. Because those ninth graders certainly had the laptops last year, so they'll be bringing some things mm -hmm. into the classroom. It would seem to me that it might be a cool thing to have uh, panels of of middle school and high school teachers together at faculty meeting or at professional development day or something like that to share experiences back and forth. Uh, a lot of this is about reassurance. I mean, I've, every time I do something new, it seems complicated, daunting, I'll never figure this out, and then two weeks later you say, well, this is part of my life. Uh, well, and I, and I agree, and I, um, in our district we have on occasion paired up our middle school teachers with high school teachers. When we first deployed the MacBooks for the high school teachers two years ago, we used the um, middle school, high school, middle school teachers to help the high school teachers learn about their MacBooks. They actually came over and worked in small groups with high school teachers and it worked really well and I think the high school teachers felt really great that they had a whole collection of colleagues they could go to and I think we'll see some of that begin to happen now as as you say with those ninth graders coming in they're going to pick up the laptop the MacBook like they've never left it and just be ready to roll and so I think we will see teachers looking to them so school. so we got we got three rules so far one is take a deep breath and relax the second is listen to the kids and the third is work with your colleagues absolutely well, I, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us and, and uh, thank uh, Sarah and Lisa for uh, what I hope is a stimulating and thought-provoking conversation. As I mentioned, there are lots of other resources we're going to be making available uh, to, to make this huge transition. Uh, you should know, by the way, that you're sitting, you in Maine who are watching this, in the world center of this movement. Uh, it's happening all over the world, but uh, we seem to be at the, at the head of it uh, here in Maine. And I really believe it's because from the very beginning, uh, this project has focused on teachers, on educators, on learning as opposed to hardware and technology. And uh, we're, we're all figuring this out together. There are no magic answers. But I think the, there are two important points. A, this is important. It will make a difference. It is urgent that we get this right because the whole future belongs to those who are educated global competition that we're facing is absolutely unprecedented and creativity and education are going to be the dividing lines and we don't have time to spend 10 or 20 years figuring this out we've got to do it now and there is a sense of urgency to this and the second point is we can do it you can do it and it is a, it is a change and change is always hard 
but it's an important one, and it is one which thousands of teachers in Maine have already crossed and mastered, and uh, we're moving forward, taking it to the next level. So thanks a lot for being with us, and uh, enjoy being digital.